Hi guys, spring is coming. So I'm going to uh, upgrade my e-bike to uh, all-wheel drive. So basically they already have a you know, hard motor right here. Um, so I'm going to add another hub motor in the front, maybe it's all-wheel drive. Uh, why you need all-wheel drive? I mean, there's some, there are a lot of mistakes on that. So if you just ride on the city road, you definitely don't need a all-wheel drive. I mean, the all-wheel drive doesn't give you more speed. It only gave you more torque. So, so for me, because I always ride on the off-road. So whenever you need an actual torque to go up hill, go through the sand, so that's all-wheel drive need. Uh, if you just want to increase the speed, uh, you need to, uh, you know, increase the voltage of your system. And the all-wheel drive, it doesn't increase your speed, okay? Uh, to, to, uh, to make the all-wheel drive, is actually, it's pretty simple. Usually, I mean, the e-bike you can buy, either have a middle drive, you have a, you know, hub motor on the back, and uh, you can just replace in the front wheel to get all wheel drive and uh, there there actually have original built in the kit so you can just replace the whole things uh, but usually in that way uh, usually it's a heavier and also uh, you know your wheel will be look different i mean that'll be look something weird <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the same. And the replace uh, a half motor inside. It's, it looks like a lot of work, but actually it's it's not that bad. I mean, pretty uh, straightforward. There are a couple of tricky parts. I'm going to uh, talk about that. Uh, the first thing you got to make sure the motor you bought will be matched the fog. The fog in the front, the distance here to here has to be matched on the fork you have. Otherwise, it just won't work, okay? So that's the things with the motor. And then uh, after motor, you need a, a controller. I have this uh, pretty simple controller, very lightweight. So I'm probably going to mount somewhere here, you know. Um, the controller, I mean, there's some pretty cheap controller, some expensive controller. Uh, usually expensive controller has more functions. But uh, for me, like I don't, <laughs> pretty much straightforward. So I'm going to link the throttle to my current throttle. That's pretty much it. I don't really need any other functions. Uh, so that's why this is a pretty cheap controller I have. and then you need a battery uh, you can you can use the power from your original batteries but uh, this is the original battery the mount right here so if I want to use this power I probably have to open it and find the wire and then connect to the front to the controller in the front since I, I made a lot of uh, you know common power to battery adapters. I just uh, made a new word in the adapter for the Eagle batteries. Um, I have a Eagle battery can mount on the frame somewhere here. You know. uh, and uh, this is uh, dedicated to mount on the front. It's very simple. You just pull the Eagle battery in. It will be locked right here. See, will be locked right here. So in this way, um, I think it's easier. And also, I I I give an extra battery, which means an extra range I'm going to travel. Uh, yeah, that the things. And uh, so we talk about the motor, controller, and batteries, and then the the tricky part is your uh, spoke so this is actually the most tricky part <laughs> to uh, to to put a 
car motor in. Uh, what the tricky part is the size. So you want the exactly the size you need um, because if it's a longer, so this one will be you know stuck in your uh, tires. So that's not good. So if it's a shorter, then you cannot really tie it up. So you need uh, exactly the size uh, to make this work. And you can see I uh, actually have a couple of sides in the past because I, I, I began whenever I order something, <laughs> it's not really in the perfect size. And then I have other different sides. I have, I have a couple of sides I already have. Um, yeah, this is a this is a really a tricky part. The way that I measure the spark uh, is uh, I'm going to measure my current spark length, and then uh, I'm going to find out the difference between this uh, half, I mean from here to here, so that distance, and uh, and from your current half, the distance. I'm going to find the difference. Say if you current have like in this size, and then there's a difference. So you're gonna find out this difference, and use your current uh, spark lines to uh, manage this difference. That'll be your spark you need. So I'm take off the wheel, and uh, so you're gonna measure from here. here so this is a 254 millimeter 254 millimeter that's my current spoke lungs and then uh, you're going to measure the distance between you're going to measure from the center to center from the hole so this is a 254 minus uh, 42 will be uh, 212. Yeah, 212. Yeah, that's the that's the spark plans you're gonna need. Uh, since I have a you know, couple of sides, so that doesn't matter for me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is the most tricky part. So if you can from the company, sell your spark. If it's not right size, you can get a replacement. Uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, you know, just like me, you're gonna have a different size of your spark in your hand. Uh, and then I'll just uh, undo the tires. So basically you can uh, push out the pressure. Push out the pressure. And you need to uh, take off the, you know, the disc for your uh, brake. So you're gonna put the, the disc back right here for the brake. Uh, this is sometimes it's really tight. You gotta be very, very careful to take it out. Otherwise, you can just buy a new disc. That'll be, that'll be fun. And the disc, you got to make sure you got the right size. So this is actually uh, uh, 180 millimeter size. So most uh, disc will be 160, I think. So yeah, for this part, you gotta make sure you got the right size. So, but I'm gonna just use that curved disc. I don't think that it has any problem right here. And then I'm gonna take off the tire. So you probably need a two screwdriver to do that. Put this over. And then another screwdriver just keep pulling off.
Okay. Control UV power off. And then you're going to take off the slip. I usually just cut it. You know, somebody want to make this perfect. Use a uh, hot air gun to uh, take off this and then put it back. Um, it's not something super important. I usually would just cut it out and whenever I put it back, I just put the, you know, uh, Dutch tape <laughs> to put them together. Okay. And then I'm going to take out the current spoke. It's a uh, you know, power tool, probably much easier to save your time. So to put the spark in the hub, it's pretty simple. So basically, you know, you put a one from uh, each side. So this is the one from uh, this side and then I can put another one from a different side. That's it. So you're gonna put everything in there. Uh, so this is from the other side and this will be on this side. A beer box that should be good enough to hold this straight. Okay. 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 Don't tie to that. Don't, don't uh, you know, screw too much, just a little bit. And uh, right now you don't need to uh, think about that much. You just uh, make sure you'll be holding it there. So I just uh, simply tie some, some spot to make it holding the position. And then you can start from whatever the one you want to start. Let's see, we start from here, okay? So the next one will be cross. The next one will be cross to here. Again, I just a uh, little bit tight. You don't want to tie that too much. And then this one. And just keep going. Just one cross is enough. Um, you know, some people like cross two of them. Um, I mean, depend on the, your hot motor size if you can cross two of them yeah that's fine but uh, just one cross it's it's good enough okay this is the one side so you're going to turn over for another side oh someone still fall off okay okay both sides in so and then you can tie the nipples um, the things you want to tie it you know as equal as you can I mean still you don't want to tie too much just uh, Make sure that everything is equal, because that's as you're gonna make your uh, the, the 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 wheel frame kind of wiggling. So try to make as equal as possible, and then uh, 
once you put on the back, and then you can adjust more, more precisely. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. You can see the the spark will be uh, come out pretty much equally. You don't want you know some spark come out really high, some is way inside. Um, so you make this uh, equally will be uh, lastly you know got tweak of your wheel, um, and once you put back on. Can use this tool to actually adjust to make it, you know, perfect in the wheel. Um, right now, everything is good, so we can go back on the uh, dish brake and then uh, put back on the tires, and this part will be done.